Would you give me a penicillin or streptomycin injection? A job she has to do many times during the day. Nurse Forbes has always followed the usual procedure, the method she was taught when training in hospital. Sterile conditions and the well-being of the patient are naturally her first concern. She knows, of course, that some people are less tolerant than others to antibiotics, and she'd be quick to report to the doctor any sign of sensitization in her patients, a skin rash or dermatitis. But as for herself, she'd tell you that she takes normal and adequate precautions, and that she has never had the slightest hint of trouble. She's not yet aware that there is a part of her technique which must now be considered faulty, not because of a risk to the patient, but because it subjects her to a needless contact with the antibiotic. She's going to demonstrate to us her normal method of procedure so that we can see where the faults lie. And immediately comes the first danger point. She fits an old needle onto the syringe for withdrawing the drug. So that we can see more easily any faults in technique, the file is filled with fluorescent material. This glows when ultraviolet light is shone on it. The cap is pierced the solution withdrawn. Now, of course, she must change the needle, fitting a new one onto the syringe for the actual injection. This means that if there is a leakage at the junction, her fingers are bound to come in contact with any fluid there. The next danger point is when the nurse expels the bubble of air in the syringe. The spray contaminates her hand and also her arm. If she were really using an antibiotic, she would be barely conscious of this as the spray would be much finer and she'd probably continue with her work with never a backward thought to her own contamination. She might not realize either that her face had also caught some of the spray. Meanwhile, she proceeds with the normal routine. She rinses the syringe carefully in boiled water. Then, of course, all the equipment will be boiled before she leaves the house. Finally, she washes her own hands. But when she's ready to leave, she'll still have on her arms and on her face the evidence of the risk she's taking in coming in contact with the drug. What is this risk for the many people in the medical, nursing and pharmaceutical professions who have to handle antibiotics? Tolerance for the drug varies from one person to another and often does not depend on the degree to which a person is exposed to contamination. But sensitization is a curious and unpredictable phenomenon and may appear without warning when it is least expected. Take Sister Trace, for example. She works in the tuberculosis ward of a hospital and has to give a great number of antibiotic injections daily. After four years without trouble, she has developed dermatitis around the eyes and on the hands between the fingers. Being a sensible person, she reported the treatment immediately. It did not necessarily follow that her condition was a result of using the antibiotic. It could have been caused by a variety of substances even such everyday materials as cosmetics or soap. But the specialist has patch-tested her skin and by a process of exclusion has definitely traced the cause of the trouble to streptomycin. Because she has reported early, there is every chance that she will respond well to treatment. Dr. Mansell is a more difficult case. He also has developed a serious condition of dermatitis as a result of giving penicillin injections. And this, in spite of the fact that he really gives very few in the course of his work. What both Sister Chase and Dr. Mansell want to know is, can they carry on giving antibiotic injections when they recover, or will they always be sensitive? And the reply to this question is nearly always the same. Nobody really can say. Some people can be desensitized and then carry on as before, so long as they take precautions. Others remain acutely sensitive no matter what precautions they take. 
The only effective answer to the problem is to take the precautions first before any sensitization has a chance to set in. Now we are going to see a demonstration of an improved technique for giving antibiotic injections, which can work out to reduce the danger to an absolute minimum. The first thing to discuss is the question of the needle and whether it is necessary to use two of them. It has been assumed that puncturing the rubber cap of the file blunts the needle. Here's an experiment which seems to indicate that this is a fallacy. The tutor punctures a rubber ball a great number of times. Actually, she keeps it up for nearly a hundred punctures. Now she has a look at it under a microscope. When the needle point is magnified, we can see that it's not the slightest bit blunted in spite of the treatment it's been receiving. Compare it to this brand new needle. When the tutor has washed her hands again, she can go on with the demonstration. Again, the antibiotic will be represented by fluorescent material, which will show up under ultraviolet light. Notice that the tutor puts on clean gloves for her own protection. Forceps are used when assembling the syringe, which of course has already been tested and sterilized in the usual way. But watch here for a very important difference in technique. One needle, and one only, is used throughout. This alone would greatly reduce the risk of antibiotic contamination of the fingers, even if gloves were not worn. And the same needle will do its work just as well, because, as we've seen, it's not likely to be blunted when it pierces the rubber cap of the file. Now comes the crucial point of the improved technique. After the fluorescent solution has been drawn down, the bubble of air is expelled into the file. The plunger is carefully supported to prevent the entry of more air while the needle is being withdrawn. By this method, no antibiotic spray can possibly fly about to contaminate arms or face. Now look at the tutor's gloved hands under ultraviolet light. Contamination is very slight. Her face is quite free. And so too are her arms. The injection would, of course, be made at this point but the tutor takes that for granted. She proceeds with the cleansing of the syringe and of her hands, gloves and ungloved. Running water is strongly recommended here if it's at all possible. This then is the new method of giving antibiotic injections. Use one needle throughout, expel the air into the bottle, put on gloves to protect against any small leakage, and running water for washing syringe, gloves, and finally, the hands themselves. Now, it's the turn of the nurses to try for themselves. The practice files are filled with water. It may seem a bit hard to ask trained people to unlearn a technique that has become second nature to them and master a new method. However, with a little practice and the knowledge that they will be protecting their own health, they will soon forget they ever knew any other way. <laughs>